Hello and welcome to Moment in Time Chronicles. I'm your host, Sean Townley. Today I have with me Joseph D. Warren, a good friend of mine. We've been going to Toastmasters for several years now. We also have a book club, The Hustle and Know Experience, that we do with Julie Moore as well. And we have both started kind of reaching out on YouTube to do our own kind of thing. We're all kind of find our niche. I think that's the popular word, the niche, the niche, whatever you want to call it. So we're throwing a lot of spaghetti against the wall, and this is one of the ways we're going to do it. One of the things I thought would be interesting is having interviews with folks in different times in their life to see how things have changed for them over time. So we'll go ahead and get this party started. Joseph, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of what you do. Who is Joseph D. Warren today? Who is Joseph D. Warren today? I'm a dude. <laughs> um, I like to have fun. I work as a financial planner. And I have a financial planning business with my family. I work with my father and my brother. It's called Financial Planning HQ in the Medical Center of San Antonio. I'm very passionate about public speaking. I, I met you through Toastmasters a few years ago. And I just found that it's something I really love doing. I love public speaking. So I've been trying to get better and better at that. My next milestone for that is I'm actually doing a paid webinar. So we're charging money for a webinar on nice. Nice. the second. And that's a big milestone for me. I actually visualized that earlier this year before the, the whole pandemic thing happened. I had a visualization practice where I would walk around the neighborhood listening to music and just kind of like what my, I want my life to be like in the future. And that was one thing I did, except it wasn't going to be on Zoom. It was going to be in person. But it's been a kind of a crazy year. And that's a big milestone for me. And I, that's actually benefiting charity. So we're going to set up a scholarship fund for Latina lawyers or future Latina lawyers to help fund the education of Hispanic ladies so they can become lawyers. Nice. What else am I up to? I love public speaking. I love doing these YouTube videos. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. My current struggles right now is I think time management is a big thing. I sometimes pack my time so quick, so, so back to back that I don't have time to slow down and smell the roses. It's, I think that's in Ferris Bueller. They say, you got to take some time to slow down and smell the roses. Absolutely. That's something I'm working on. I mean, I don't want it to just be like where I'm always working 100% and then I take a vacation for a week. And that's like, that makes it okay. I think you should have, you need time to, to think about stuff, to have kind of empty time so you can be creative and have new ideas. Otherwise, you're just stuck in the same loop. And going down the rabbit hole here, let me see. I'm big into conspiracy theories. I'm just talking about myself in general. But <laughs> okay. I'm huge into conspiracy theories. Um, and I've always been that way. I love kind of questioning the, the narrative. And I think a lot of what we're taught in history class and school is not correct. <laughs> it's just what, what they put in there. So if you want to talk about that, we can. It might get a little bit interesting. What else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like music. I play the piano. I haven't been playing much recently, but big fan of different types of music, newer music, older music. And really, I think, I think my purpose is right now is I think of my purpose as being to help other people, people who've been through what I've been through and really just, you know, teach, teach people, help, help people to heal in their own way just by sharing my own story. And maybe they can resonate with that and um, it can help them in some way. All right. Okay. So our first question, now that we know who a little bit about Joseph is, who are you, Joseph, when no one else is looking? So when I first saw that question, when you first sent that to me, I was reminded of an Onion article, which I want to pull up and read. The headline of the article is, Study, Average Person Becomes Unhinged Psychotic When Alone in Own House. So when no one's looking, I think I've become a little bit more unhinged. <laughs> I'm more likely to do things that are... Um, I have, a, I have a very professional persona, so I'm more likely to do things like singing, even though I don't have a good singing voice. I'll just be like sing, belting out loud, whatever stupid song is on. Um, I'll admit it, it's a little bit embarrassing. I also, sometimes like if I'm in a really good mood, I'll be dancing to whatever's going on. So like if you catch me in the car, I'm probably like jamming to something. Um, who am I when no one's looking? Is that question more designed for like, like I'm trying to think. Things that I hide normally when people are looking. <laughs> so when you're just being, you know, when you're in a no judgment zone, when, when, when you don't have to worry about, 
outward appearances. I mean, for example, my wife and I have this little saying we have amongst each other. When we're, when we're sitting in the house, it's just us mm-hmm. and no one else is looking. We wear our moves, right? So we just wear our comfortable clothes. We watch some, some Netflix, you know, we, we eat some ice cream, that kind of stuff. Well, so how are you when no one else is looking and you don't care? Yeah. I mean, I just have a lot of weird habits. I talk to myself a lot. I'll sometimes, if I'm in a bad mood, I'll pump myself up. So I'll be like, Joseph, you got this. Nothing can stop you from what you're going for. So I do a lot of like pep talk to myself. Uh, But, you know, if I'm in a bad mood, it might just be the opposite of that. Um, You know, like, why did you do that? Um, Who am I when I'm, no one is looking? I just blast out music, (laughs) I guess. Music is a huge part of who I am. So I like to just blast music. If no one's around, like I know the office is empty and I was working, I would probably put the music up really loud. Um, I'm trying to think of who I am. It's hard for me to think about myself. Not, there's no wrong answers here. So don't worry about that too much. I wouldn't, you know, we're not, we're not trying to fill time. We just wanted, this is just more for you to kind of reflect on when you see it later on. So. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then, you know, I, I have like a lot of introspective qualities. I, I like doing stuff like journaling. Um, I don't, I don't, I'll necess- I don't want anyone looking while I'm journaling because I'll write like the craziest stuff sometimes. And sometimes I'll write just like day to day, how the day went. Um, I, I'm trying to think what else I do, you know, some things I do. I'm very like into my, my Christian faith. So I'll do a lot of like, I don't really talk about that. I haven't talked about it recently. I don't think in Hustle and No, but, um, you know, like reading the Bible, praying. Um, other than that, I'm just like an unhinged psychotic. I'm just dancing around. <laughs> uh, okay. No, I like to sing said. karaoke. That's another thing. I have a karaoke machine. I'll do that. Uh, singing, even though I'm not good at it. I like doing stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So tell us what you would want if you knew that there would be no consequences that's a very good question. If there were no consequences, what would I want? You, you do this and nothing bad's going to happen or nothing maybe good's going to happen either. So, I mean, what, what would you want to try to do or what are some things you'd like to do that you know you would never get caught or you wouldn't be seen or, or it wouldn't be held against you in any sort of way? Yeah. Digging deep here. Let me see. I'm trying to think of what I would want. <laughs> I think I have a lot of dreams where I can fly. I think it'd be cool to just be able to fly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be like, if I could have a superpower, I would want to be able to just like jump out the window and just fly to that building over there, fly over here. Um, that's one thing I would want if there were no consequences. Um, there's probably different ways to do that. I also want to be a pilot. That's something that's been on my mind for a while, but I have really horrible eyesight. My eyesight is like 2,750. So I'm wearing contacts right now, but without contacts, I can barely read a book with, without like being like this. So it gets to the point where, you know, I basically can't even barely read a book without contacts. So I was talking to some guy about that and he was saying, you can go to, you could still become a pilot. Like there's, it's still possible either in other countries or in certain, like there's certain loopholes and ways I could still become a pilot, not piloting other people, but piloting myself around. Um, so that's one thing I'd want to do, but it's kind of tricky because my eyesight's not too good. Um, man, if there were no consequences, now you open the floodgates. I want to make an album <laughs> of music. Absolutely. That I would love to do. Yeah. I think that would be so much fun. Even if it didn't take off or anything, it'd be cool to just have like goofy tracks that I made or produced like very cheaply and to release something like that. Maybe like. So is that something that you would say is on your bucket list? I mean, you'd like to knock out before yeah it is on my bucket list i'm gonna write it down so i don't forget make like a music album um if there i knew there would be no consequences but i think you should do some you should do things with the consequences in mind so i'm trying to think of something where i truly don't care if there's consequences i mean i think a lot of stuff like that like i want to live my life in a fearless way and that comes down to fear yeah and yes, I heard this. I like that. I've heard this saying, like, and I, it was a rule I used to live by, but sometimes I do give in to fear. I think we all do sometimes. But if I'm afraid of it, I have to do it. It's almost like a rule that you set for yourself. 
if it causes me to feel fear, that means I have to do it. <laughs> Almost like computer language. And, you know, that got me into some crazy situations. I got on, on stage with a professional band and sang <laughs> with them, even though I can't sing. So I was being, you know, the person I was when no one's looking, actually on stage with a band. And there you go. I butchered the song Super Freak by Rick James. Oh, okay. Right. But I got props afterwards. You know, people were like, being like, props, props. Because I think there's a certain respect when you see someone who can take a fear, that something that a lot of people would be scared of and just go do it. And I think that's almost a way of living life. So if it came to no consequences, and I'm working on this currently, I'd want to live my life in a way where fear actually pointed me towards what I knew I had to do. It was, it, I would feel fear, but it would actually point me towards, you know, because I'm afraid of this, I'm, I know I'm not going to be around forever. So I'm just going to go enjoy my life and do this thing. Because I, I think Tim yeah. Ferriss talks about that. I think James Altucher, I mean, if you, would you be willing to go into a crowded room and just lay on the floor for five minutes? It, it depends on my mood, but I mean, okay. I could see myself working up to that. I think I know how much time we have, you know? <laughs> I could definitely do that. Like if I gave me a year, I could definitely do that. Probably sooner. Um, and a lot of what you learn is like, yeah, people aren't constantly thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. And then at a certain point, like when I've seen people do that, like people just start walking around them. <laughs> it's like, okay, whatever. I'm going to go. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of want to live my life in a way where fear never held me back. And I was kind of guided by my passion, what I love to do. And that could, that could manifest in a number of ways. You know, making an album would be an example of that. I think that was great. I think making an album, that's uh, on, on my personal bucket list. It's going to be, you know, even if it's only 10, 10 songs less than 30 minutes long, you know, just a bunch of two-minute songs, you know, just yeah. having some fun. But, I mean, there's some things I want to do. Like, I want to get on TikTok. I know that would be a great way to grow my YouTube channel. Is just like TikTok. I want to start tweeting. But I need to just work out the time. Like, I want to come up with, like, good tweets to come out with. Either saying something or asking, like, hey, what's, what's a money mindset that leads to success? Things like that. Um, I still haven't done those things, but I've been thinking about them for a while. So. Okay. All right. Well, well, let's transition to the last question. What do you want to do before you die? Live. <laughs> okay. That's my answer. Um, before I die. Yeah, I mean, think about this as you're on your deathbed, you're reflecting back, right? Hopefully you're 120 years old, and I was able to... Man, a big... If I look at, like, being on my deathbed, looking back now... I just want to be a person who doesn't hold back like what they're what they're meant to do so i want my legacy to be like i help people i put joy out into the world i didn't care if i look stupid like i was i was not afraid to look stupid um that's something that i think holds me back sometimes i think a lot of my generation is kind of like fear of, or maybe it's all generations fear of what people think of me will sometimes hold me back so i'll be like i don't want to look this way but I, instead of that, I want to be someone who lives authentically, actually goes for what I want, no matter what it is. And if I fail, I fail. I learn something. And I just keep going. I don't give up. Um, so, so let me break you a little bit. I told you I wasn't going to do this. I'd let you roll. Yeah. Think about the coolest people you know and how different they are from everyone else and what mm -hmm. makes them cool, right? Is the yeah. fact that they don't care what anybody else thinks about them? Is, I mean, is that a fair statement? That's a totally fair statement. And it's not that I want to be cool, but I know that caring about what people want in the long term will just, it'll ruin your life. <laughs> it kind of makes it so you're not living for yourself. You're, or I'm not saying you should live for yourself, but you're not living authentically. You're kind of living through like the lens of what other people think. Sure. Um, and that's something I, I, I'll be honest, I struggle with that sometimes. I struggle with like, what will people think if I say this? But I want to, I want to train myself, train my mind to where... Instead of thinking that, I'm going to say, is it true? Is this authentically true? And then just say it. Um, even doing this interview with you, I'm kind of like having to go through that. Like, I'm thinking like, what, what if I say this? It won't be right. Um, but I don't want to live that way. I think the best way to live is in truth. We're all seeking truth. Like, what, is what are scientists seeking? The truth. 
What are, you know, judges seeking the truth? So I think in our lives, we should also be seeking the truth. What's, what's good. And the only way to do that is to let go of the fear of what other people think, what other people might see it as and not be afraid to fail because fail publicly. I mean, like all the greats have failed publicly. <laughs> They've had moments of like, you know, like, I'm thinking like Jim Carrey, Oprah, they've had moments where they were just at rock bottom. Sure. Not and they that, survived, right? Yeah. Not let that define you. And that's almost like a badge of honor, I think, to like, the bigger you're failing, like the bigger the games that you're playing. And um, I kind of want my life to be a testament to that. I don't want to fail, but I want to be playing bigger and bigger and bigger games and reach, reach my potential, whatever that is. I don't want to be on my deathbed being like, oh, I wish I had... You know, I pursued my dream of public speaking for money. I wish I had asked that girl out. I just want to do it. And if, you know, she says no, or I don't make enough money, public speaking, at least I can say I tried it and I gave it the best shot. And I think you can sleep well doing that, but you can't sleep well if you're like 10 years down the line, you know, I should have just told Becky that her hair was, her eyebrows were on fleek. So <laughs> that's it. There you go. All right. Anything else you'd like to to mention in this uh, in this chronicle? Hmm. Anything else I want to mention? Just in general, like a point or anything? This else? is a moment in time, so we're going to hopefully we're going to compare this to Joseph Warren a few years from now. What would you, what would you want to tell Joseph Warren five years from now? Yeah. If you're not going towards what you're passionate about, what you're, what you're, what you love to do, then you're off track. So get back on track and do something that you love to do. That's what I would tell myself. Excellent. All right. This has been Moment in Time. Where this is an experiment that uh, I'm doing with my buddy Joseph and, and hopefully have a lot of other folks. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is to release this also weekly, do a, 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 week, a weekly interview and release it and then hopefully catch up with those folks down the road yeah. and see how they turn out, how they're, how they're continuing to progress in life. This is Moment in Time Chronicles. I'm Sean Townley. Thank you.